Hey everybody, Psychosaurus is here and today, well, I thought I could make an update to the recommended quest but then I was also about maybe I could combine it and do it as a farming guide like for not only for legendary quest but overall as to how to get from level 1 to level 40 with your save, what to do and what I think is the best way to reach that level 40 so yeah here we are and yeah pretty much I'm gonna try to explain why I think this is the best way and yeah why you should do it so yeah let's start with when you start at level 1 and you wanna reach level 20 this includes Greeks, Egyptians, Romans and Celts the other three saves start at level 20, so you have a little jump there. So what do you want to do here? And I think I'm going to split it into two parts. So, so you're a new player who just came here. You saw this game on YouTube. You were be like, oh god, I want to try this game as well. It looks cool. Where do I start? Hey, you created your save and you pretty much had the option to skip right through level 3 at, at the menu. If you're completely new to RTS games, I highly recommend you do not skip to level 3. Pretty much you want to learn the basics of controls and that's what the first few quests will get you through. You'll learn how to control your units, how to I think how to build buildings, how to train units, stuff like that. C complete basics. You want to go through those if you're completely new to RTS genre. And after that, pretty much, you're learning about the save. You're learning through the quests. You're learning the basics of the game, like how the market works, how to build up your army. Usually, the quests are quite easy, so it's not gonna put too much pressure on you unless you're playing as Romans. It might be a little bit more tougher for you. But I'll talk about that some other time. So yeah, pretty much, you what you wanna do is stick to the capital city, city quest and pretty much follow the quest line in your capital city that way you like learn the basics of the game that are maybe it's more specific to this to Age of Empires Online and yeah try to know your safe pretty much try every unit know how good it is how good it feels to use it and yeah, just follow the quest, you should easily reach level 20 like that before you're even done. Also you can unlock some cool repeatable quests, but not like these, like maybe give them under our wing, one of those, or be like a portmaster. I don't know what specific quest you need to do, just follow the quest line and after some you'll just get access to these, so if you feel like you need to farm later on and you have these repeatables available to you and you can use them to get some items if you need to. And yeah, pretty much if you're playing as Greeks you'll just do these quest lines with village elder, the scout maybe has something. I know this guy has some challenge. So you'll follow the quest lines, you'll get to Mikene, you'll do the quest for Agamemnon, then you'll go to Troy and you will siege the Troy. And then you pretty much end up by defending Mikene, and that's the end of the main capital quest line. By the time you're done with that, you you should be level 20, no problem. And that's an example, okay? Similar it's to the other precepts as well. Uh, yeah, if, if you're not completely new and you don't really want to go through these quests because there's quite a bunch of those, and you're like, eh, I don't want to go through those. It's not gonna be much fun so the other options you have are like Crete you can go to Cyprus play the skirmish I think the, there might be some guide for fast skirmish just rushing it through it and you might be able to get a lot of XP like that and yeah if you if you just want to play PvP you, you can just go straight to Sparta if you have access to I don't know when you get access to Sparta exactly maybe after 
few levels. I don't remember exactly, but you go to Sparta, you can just play the champion mode where you don't really need anything, just your skill. So you just play that. These are the other options. Otherwise, you just have to sit through those quests. And if you want those repeatables, well, you just have to sit through those. And I think that's all I have to say about this. But in case you already did level up some other Sith, you might have one of those experience boosters from like Northern Holt questline. So if you want to get faster experience points, then you can just use it and you might be able to level up faster and you might be able to reach the level 20 sooner and just go to the other quest lines. Yeah, so we are level 20 now. Let's say we are after level 20. So what, what do we do here, right? Pretty much you have a lot of quests, quest lines available to you. So you can go either to Argos, but for that if you're playing as the Greeks, Egyptians, Celts or Romans, then you need to do the defense quest in your pre in your previous quest pack. So if you haven't done that you won't you cannot go to Argos. So you need to do that. Otherwise if you're playing as the, the other three you just will have it available after you are done with your I don't know how many quests there is. I think there's just one quest. Like one just to meet the safe really fast and then just go into the action. I think that's it. So after that you just go to Argos like that. Other than Argos you can just go to Babylon or Norton Hold. I think Tarzos is also an option. Actually check this. So I don't forget Argos, the Babylon with Patakasan, Norton Hold. I think this is level 30. Yeah, this is level 30. So Tarzos should be level 20 and yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So these are your options. If I had to recommend, I would recommend go to the Northern Hold and do the quest until you get the quest where you can get the experience booster and you can just boost your XP. And a small trick about that is you don't use it, you just go do as many quests as possible. You don't give them in and you do it on as many sips as you can, then you activate the booster and then you just take take those rewards and this will boost this will boost your experience points income like that and all of a sudden you might level up in no time. And the good thing about the booster is that it's once you activate it it's active for all of your sips. If if you do that you can level up like in no time pretty much like that. So that's a good thing and yeah so grab that experience booster if you want to. I would also recommend going to Babylon. These two quest lines are not that difficult to be honest. They are like classic ones. Very easy. Some quests might prove to be a little bit more difficult but I believe you can get through those. And yeah, once you reach like level 30 then you will get more quest packs. The Greek Revolt in the Athens. Then the Well of Earth quest, Conquest of the Nine Realms, which also starts in the Northern Hold. And at level 35, you get the Lowly quest, the Brenos and Montorius adventures. Yeah. What I have to say is, you still need to do the quest packs if you want to get access to the repeatables. And if in the quest pack there are some legendary quests, well, if you want them, you need to finish the quest packs. Unless you're rich with Empire Points, so you can skip through those quests, you will just have to do those. Also, I forgot Cyprus is also level 30 spec, and I would recommend doing Cyprus because at the end of Cyprus you get a free Epic Advisor. One of the four, which is Zante, Hathor, Ligeia, or Timo. I think Timo is like would be like the best choice there, but it's up to you if you miss. If you already have Timo, you can pick one of the others. Uh, yeah, pretty much after doing all, all of that, you should be easily at level 40. I think you do, like, if you do two of these, and you're easily level 35, and then just do the Cypress. Like, 
by the end of San Francisco, just level 40. Still, I suggest you do those quest packs no matter what, so you get the access. And definitely you wanna level all of your sips if you can, so you get access to your milestones. So you pick them up at level 5, 10, 20, 30 and 40. And then you can pick from the other sips, one per sip. Let's see ya. Yeah. So yeah, you, you can definitely do that. And yeah, once level 40, you wanna start farming probably the legendary quest, but that might prove to be a little bit more, not a little bit more, but it might be too much for you at the start, because the jump of difficulty between the regular quests, like from Cyprus to the legendary quest, can, can be quite huge. It's a huge step there. So you might want to get some gear before that, and obviously there are some stores that offer some good gear. But you need coins for that. You maybe you got some coins by playing all the quest packs by far. But you might want to get some more. And yeah, so you have to do some repeatables. Like I said, we have repeatables over here. And obviously there are also the elite quests, but at level 40 you get access to the alliance quests, which offer some nice quests, but most not notable should be the, the new pharaoh's challenge and the Persian coercion. Th those two quests are pretty fast. I, I personally like Persian coercion because that quest is really fast, I know that. New pharaoh's challenge, I did not really play that much for that, but I know there is somewhere on YouTube that might be a video how to do it really fast and if you just learn how to do it I heard it's something like four or five minutes I don't know I honestly don't know I personally I prefer the Persian coercion that one is very easy you can do it no problem uh, a good one I like as well are the palace race quest and it's just learning the position that those ones are about learning the positions of the villagers and it just goes and and the priest there convert those villages, gather resources you need, get more priests if you need to. And the advantage of alliance quests is that for their last secondary objective you get legendary chests. And legendary chests obviously have better items to offer. They, they drop at least rare items, always. Ne never anything below, so if you are looking for better items you want to get those legendary chests and alliance quests are a good start right to begin. And since there are free alliance quests, alliance cities, you can do the do the quest three times. And I think I don't remember what's the cooldown. I think it's day and twelve hours because it's free times. But if you have all the saves level forty, you can just farm those quests a lot. And then yeah, there, there might be some elite quests. Nice thing about elite quests right now is that there's always guaranteed epic item and there's a legendary chest at least through what I know most of them there are some that don't give legendary chest for some reason but most of them give you a legendary chest for the last secondary objective yeah you can farm some elite quests as well if I have to mention some elite quests I'm Greek then in Mekene there's a quest called what an egomaniac, and th that one is my personal favorite. I like that quest a lot. That one can be done in like 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. It's a really fast quest. I like that quest, it's really fast, but pretty much the portmaster quests are also really good. If I have to mention, well, I made a list here. When you're playing as Egyptians, there is a quest called War Leaders Down. And that one is found in your home capital city. And I think it's the general Ahapitab who gives this one. It's a really fast quest. If you speed rush it, you can be done in like 5 minutes, maybe 6, depending on your gear and advisors. So, I'll, less than 10 minutes. It's a really fast quest. And for Celts, I would suggest Sink or Swim. It, it's a simple defense quest where you just defend against the enemy swan ships so yeah you just build up a few towers you defend might be a little bit difficult if you go for that one but it's a nice quest yeah and yeah i would suggest trying out 
the other elites as well there might be some you might like more i think every one of those is worth trying at least as a challenge and yeah i'm not mentioning romans because personally i don't really like the roman ones there are some nice quests but i don't think those are the ones i would want to farm okay and obviously other cities offer some repeatable elites as well so if i have to mention some there are also the quests called trade for some materials so yeah those, those quests are really fast if you need those materials for something i don't know maybe you want to craft something you definitely need those for building some resi residences and the storehouses in your capital city so you definitely want to do those few times then the one that you need to do are in Mykene or Massalia or Capua or the Nubian outpost and then there's also one for mosaic tiles in Argus if you need those materials you need to do those quests and yes those are available for the specific sieve so Mykene for Greeks and so on now let's go for the other quest in Argos, I've already mentioned, there's a quest called Lots of Rogues, which is probably one of the fastest quests you can do. The quest is very easy, it can be done in 3 minutes, I think, or less than 5 minutes. So you just need to kill a group of units. It's a pretty big group, but you can do it. Very easy quest, and really fast, with nice rewards. Why not? And if you're going for the Ashoka's armor, yeah, definitely worth farming. Yeah, and Argos has some other elites, but I think this one is the most worth noticing. Let's move on to Babylon. I think Babylon has like the best repeatables to offer, in my opinion. But if I have to mention some, General Zoo, what did you do? It's a nice quest, I like that one. And Landholder Nuisance, also a really nice quest, I like that one as well. My personal favorites. You find those at the Zopyrus, the Pyrus, yeah, Z Zopyrus place, the quest giver, yeah, Zopyrus, that's the one who gives those, really nice quests, I like those, another quest worth mentioning is, in my opinion, Red Dawn, which is very easy quest, I feel like that's one of the easiest repeatables you can find in this game, and this one you find at the Babylonian Portmaster, yeah. And if anything, I have to mention Ambrosia Obsession questline, which is the questline you find at Farzana. And pretty much what this is, it's a it's a global quest, and you need to do a few quests for Farzana, which is like six, maybe seven mini game mini quests. Really fast to do. It can be done in like 30 minutes, and then you just get pretty nice rewards, I actually had to check that and just the global quest gives you 5000 coins which is nice actually and with like the coins from the others you can earn like 7000 coins just by doing that and if you're leveling up it also gives a lot of experience points I think just the quests themselves give you like over 300,000 I don't remember it was a lot I think the global one gives you a lot the mini mini quests give you like 30,000 and then he, once you're done with the quest line you just go to the repeatables and do it again it's just a lot of experience points I highly recommend doing that in Northern Hold if you can do those city conquests or city defense quests I think city defense are really worth doing if you're like trying to get some gear set up and city conquest is just more difficult version of that so yeah if you're looking for something some different these are not regular quests these are like mini games where you're the capturing towers and defending against the enemies if you just do those it, it, it's pretty fun but i wouldn't do it i wouldn't do them in the long term because you, you might get bored of those really fast but they are really nice then there are also some repeaters in Rakotis, which you get access to at level 40, but I think it's better if you wait for the Legendary Quest recommendations, because they are pretty much just weaker version of those. 
Yeah, there's also one in Well of Earth called Minded Stone, which is also a pretty fast quest. It's just a regular one without the Elite version. But pretty fast quest and pretty easy. I think that's all the regular quests. Tell me what you think about the quest mentioned. Would you recommend something else? Uh, yeah, we're gonna move on to the level 40 and legendary quest. So yeah, pretty, pretty much what legendary quest should we farm? Now, it depends what you want to farm. Do you want to farm the chests or do you want to farm the coins and then five points? And the one common thing here is that the the higher difficulty rating the legendary quest has, the better the rewards are. If we take a look at this, we can see like three star six days. Also, the cooldown is also important factor here. So if we take a look, we just get a lot of chests here, a lot of coins and five points here. But if we switch it to like this, you can see it's less. So, yeah, I'm gonna start with the chest. If you wanna farm chests, I think it's worth going for quests that are at least two star difficulty. If you're going for less, well, if there are six days, it should be fine. But if you're going for one star, 12 hours, or three days, yeah, it's not really that, that worth. I think they give like one chest per secondary objective. And that's what I see as the main income of your legendary chest. Doing the at least two star will give you at least two legendary chests per secondary objective. And that's why I say you want to do those at least. But yeah, maybe you're not ready for two stars or worse. So maybe you want to start somewhere with the one star. But as you keep going, you just start doing the two star, you start farming those. It will be fast. And yeah, if you want a recommendation of some like two star really fast quest, I think Village of Size might might not be the best one right now. But if you can do it, it's a quest that takes less than 20 minutes. If you do it with the time challenge, otherwise obviously it's longer. But if we include the treasure camps there as well, you get up to five additional chests from those camps. Right? You get like 11 chests in total for that quest. It's a really good quest to farm on. But if you can do the time challenge, yeah, it's just gonna take you longer. And at that point, I'm like, eh, it's not worth it. Might not be the greatest quest right now. Okay, and about the coins and empire points. Again, the difficulty rating and the cooldowns matter here. So the higher the difficulty, the better rewards there there's gonna be. The higher, the longer the cooldown, the higher rewards there's gonna be. So yeah, the great rewards you'll find like I think four star quest, six day cooldown is like really where it's look really good. But I think even like three star, three days quests are really good. Remember, you get a lot of chests from those as well. So even though you might see like 4,000 coins plus 1,000 per secondary objective, and there's like two secondary objectives, so you get like 6,000 coins. Remember, you also are getting those chests. And usually, there's just stuff that you don't want to use. Like you don't need it, you already have something better. So you just want to sell it. You just vendor it, you just sell it on through the global market. All of a sudden, that income is higher. Yeah, and if I say you just render it, it might be like few, four rare pieces of gear. If you sell those, that's another thousand coins. So for each four chests, you get additional thousand coins. That's how how we describe it. So if you see three star, three days, you get like I don't know, like eight chests. Maybe, maybe even more, I don't know. So you get like 6,000 plus, plus like 2,000 for the chest. Yeah, it's 8,000 coins. That's a lot. Yeah, coins, earning coins is really easy once you start doing the more difficult quests. If you don't, if you can't beat those yet, then the easier ones should be fine as well. Like, like I mentioned, village of size, you get like 50, 1,500 coins. 
And you get six chests. That's another fifteen hundred. You sell the stuff. You sell the stuff. You will three thousand coins. And then you also get the treasure camps, which is like I mean it can be worse, so it, it's another thousand coins. You earn four thousand coins by doing one one fast quest. It's not the worst. I think coins is quite fast. Oh boy, it, it's not a golden times like it used to be, but it, it's still it's still easy to earn some coins. And there are also some specific quests that give you a lot of coins, and I'll go through those later. In a moment, actually. And yeah, about the Empire Points, pretty much if you earn a lot of coins, you earn earning a lot of Empire Points. But I think Empire Points are you need help, my more about the cooldowns, because you get this 6 days 2 star, you get 80 Empire Points. Watch yourself out there. I don't have this one here. You can get like 3 star 6 days, you earn 100. I think 3 star 3 days earn you 60 Empire Points. So yeah, you just go for the high, higher cooldowns and the Empire Points will keep coming. And yeah, pretty much you don't really have a need to spend too many Empire Points anyway. The way you spend them is just expanding your vault and then you just spend it on reforging and maybe skipping quests and so you can buy stuff in the, at the Empire Store. So if we go through what might be you can buy those wisdom of the empires for the experience boost if you want to. That's another way to spend your empire points, but the main thing should be expanding the vault. You need the space. Okay, and now let's go on to the legendary quest recommendations. And I'm gonna move to Cyprus first, because I wanna mention two quests here. And that's the the Renegade Escapade Grand Finale and the Tamiya Pirates. I still think these two quests are probably the best quest to start with. At least the at least the Renegades is in my opinion one of the easiest quests you can find. I wouldn't say it's an easy quest anymore, but if I exclude the event quest, it definitely belongs to the it would be number one easiest quest. Maybe number two, there's one more example. And Tamiyat Pirates, I would recommend because it's like one of the first quests where you start with water battles. And yeah, the enemy can be kinda aggressive early with the infantry drops. But yeah, it's just great for the water battles. And remembering to keep the enemy dogs destroyed so they don't rebuild their na naval force. It's a good quest just to be there. And yeah, there are also some nice quests I would recommend. Which is, one of them is Marion, which is probably the best quest to farm coins. Because you get 15,000 coins for this quest. If you're doing it, doing it like not the fastest, you can be done in like, I would say 30-35 minutes, maybe 40 if you're slower, but once you learn how to deal with this quest, it should take you like, yeah, like I said, 35 minutes at worst. And it's 15,000 coins, that's a lot of coins, probably one, one of the best quests to farm coins on. I think this is the best one, actually. I don't, I don't think there's anything better than this. Maybe one, but that one might be way too difficult for you. some of you, so yeah, th this is definitely the best way, I highly recommend playing Mario for the coins. Second, and this one is also quite easy, it's the Pop Force. I think this quest is quite easy, can be done really fast. Right, it's something a little bit more challenging than Tamiyas or Renegades, but good quest. Paramount. And then there's also Soloi. I wouldn't recommend this one. I think this one is a little bit more annoying than the other two. And I think it's nice to do it once, just so you can say I beat this quest, but I wouldn't say you want to farm this quest that much. But if you learn how to do it, yeah, it can be 
quest you can farm on as well. But it's not really that worth. Okay, and yeah, we're gonna take it. My list, we have in the progression. So let's go to the Argus, and yeah, one quest I need to mention here. It's the impossible cataclysm. Again, it's a really good quest to farm the coins on. It's one of those classics. The reason why they have why Marin and Cataclysm have these high coins is because they're classics. And yeah, Celestine doesn't really want to touch the rewards that much here, although they still have a revert that this changed. They're not supposed to give you the Celest chest. Celest chest. But yeah, good quest for farming coins. It's also a water water map so yeah if you're it's not that bad in my opinion for water battles but yeah you need to drop your units and set up your base on the enemy island good quest to practice on that it's not really that difficult like it says three stars but it depends how fast you are if you're too oh yeah it's gonna be three star but other than that good quest to farm some points on. Then what do we have here? I know I'm losing it. Let's go up only one. I don't know if I should say I, I can recommend this. You definitely need a partner for this one. And I've been trying this one a couple of times when we could still play this solo through the park. And I did not really like I don't really like this quest because there's a lot of units. I don't know if I should recommend it. So you try it for yourself and tell me if, if it's really worth farming or if it's just worth farming it once and then never again. Breaking Bandits, I don't really want to recommend this one because that of the secondary objective. If you ignore it, you should be fine. But if you, if you are going for the secondary objective, yeah, it's gonna take a while. So yeah, depends. You wanna, you wanna do the secondary objective, then no. You don't want to do it, then it should be fine. It should be something like Renegades, yeah, with Water Bell. And then, I think that's the last one, yeah. Rescue me. I don't know if I want to recommend this one. I'm gonna say it's a fast quest, it can be done really fast. But my issue with this is it's a little bit random. Because the map generated random, the enemy bases, locations are random. And that's why I kind of dislike it. But it's a quest that can be done really fast. I don't know. I'll leave that one to you. Thank you Personally, I don't really like it, so I'm gonna say no. But if you like it, then it's fine, I guess. And that's all for Argus. I guess we can move on to Babylon. And we can go on to the General Zeus glory days. And there are some nice quests, maybe. Okay, Suzine Strife. I don't really want to recommend it, but if you're playing this in Cope, it should be fine. Really good rewards. I would suggest doing it in Cope. I kind of hate it solo because sometimes I just. I barely make make it in time and that's why I kind of dislike it and similar to this one Euphrates in Disorder it's the same thing great rewards but it's just the time challenge is really annoying so I would say do these two in co-op then yes I would say it can be good to farm on these but otherwise no Travel at the Tigris it's a 30 minutes quest and I like this one because it has a lot of secondary objectives, a lot of chests to earn from this one. And you can see some nice coins as well. I like this one, but it might be a little bit difficult at the beginning to get used to this quest. And yeah, the enemy units just start with maximum armory upgrades, so it might be a little bit harder on you early, but if you get used to it, it's a good to farm some chests on and last one here more mad median in more mad medians in Mesopotamia okay this one is one star I think if you can survive oh yeah three days have now two chests okay yeah don't do don't do one 
one start, 12 hours, that one gives you only one chest. Two to at least three days. One star. Okay, back to, back to the quest. It's a pretty fast quest. Not that difficult. It's, a, it's just... It just might be a little bit tough on you in the, with the first waves, because they come way, really at the same time, and it just... Oh boy. It might be a little bit annoying early, but if you get used to it... Again, it's a good place to farm chest. So yeah, it's a good quest. More Medium Tigger is definitely recommending. I'm definitely recommending those if you can handle those. And the other two, I would suggest doing in co-op. Otherwise, nah. Okay, let's move on to Norton Hold. And there's pretty much only one quest. That's the Biotics Returns. Now this one gives really good rewards, but some players might be like, don't do this quest at all. I like this quest, but it's because I like longer quests. This quest might be way too long for you, before you get used to it. And believe me, your first successful run might take hours to complete. Rewards are nice, there's one guaranteed legendary chest. But other than that, it's just a long quest, so I do not recommend it if you're new and if you are a veteran, yeah, it's just a little bit longer quest, but it's giving you nice rewards, it's not that bad, come on, try it, go ahead, Good luck. Don't you can do it in less than an hour, come on, <laughs> you just need to practice, yeah, but seriously, don't, don't do that quest if you're new, you just might hate life after that. Oh boy, let's move on to the Athens, and yeah, in the Athens, there are a few quests, probably worth mentioning. So let's start, start here at Socrates, so New Rebellion and the End of the Traders. If I have to recommend one of these, it's the New Rebellion, I think this one is much easier, you just build up walls and two bases will never attack you and then you just defending against them. you deal with that and then you move on to the second one deal with that move on to the third one new rebellion i would recommend it also gives really good points and empire points not that many chess but yeah coins and empire points good quest for that once every six days and all the traders is a little bit worse so if you can handle it it's about the same as new rebellion but i think this one is more annoying so yeah, I don't recommend it that much. Maybe with a, with a call partner, it might be better. And then we got these four. So FSO. FSO is a spearman only quest, so you can definitely do it if you have some nice gear on your spearman. But I wouldn't say it's the best quest to do. It's how should I say it? It's a little bit too long in my opinion. Like there's too many fortifications in this one so it's fine but I don't recommend it that much Neos, I kinda, I kinda hate this quest because you cannot train infantry in this one for secondary objective if you do, well, the rewards are just bad so Neos, do it just once for the challenge otherwise I don't really recommend it Sardes? Sardes is a good one in my opinion it might be a little bit longer quest but the rewards are nice, and if you can handle handle it, it can be okay, in my opinion. It's just that there can be a lot of units coming at you at one point. Man. If you hold on, they might stop sending them. Like, I think they are running out of resources at some point, so... Yeah, it, it, it can all of a sudden become much easier. So, yeah, I... I can recommend Sardens, it's okay quest to do, but if you can't handle it, then don't do it. Maybe with the call partner before you get used to it. Mileto, personally, I don't like Mileto. I don't really like Mileto. Maybe it's just because of me, but I know some players can do it really fast, so I'm not the one to recommend it. 
but if you maybe watch someone else to do it, I, I don't know, I don't, I just don't know how to do it fast. And it's not one of my favorites, so yeah, if you wanna do it, go ahead, but I don't recommend it. But it's fine if you like it. I think it's all... Yeah, you just have this... This incursion quest. Okay, moving on. Well of Earth. Let's go to Well of Earth. And the thing about Well of Earth quests is they are quite long because the maps are huge and they are like fully utilized. It's so annoying. Okay, let's start with Spartalheim. Personally, I hate this quest. I am one of those players who just don't want to see this quest ever. Ever again. Oh god. But I know this, there might be someone who would recommend this and I did watch a video where it can be done in I think less than 5 minutes and I was like eh. Okay I tried it but it's just... Nah, I, I just cannot like this quest. If, if you feel like it, go ahead. I just don't recommend it. Alfheim? Alfheim depends on the safe in my opinion. If you're playing a Skeletal or Romance, you can do it real fast. Anyone else, I feel like I just cannot do it fast enough. Just, just don't have the st that strong unit. But it's a good quest with the reward. It, it might be a little bit more challenging. If you can handle it with Chaos and Romans, go with those two saves. In my opinion, they are really fast there. The other saves might depend, but I, most of them are just slower, much slower than those two. So, yeah, Chaos Romans, if you can do it fast enough with those, go ahead. It can take you like 40 minutes maybe with, the, with those two. Depends how you pass to work. Asgard, again, like I said, the, the quests here are long because the maps are huge and fully utilized if possible. And Asgard is another example of this, so this one might be a little bit longer quest. Rewards are nice. So I'm like, it's nice to farm on, but it's a long quest. Elheim is probably the one exception here. At least at this quest giver. Elheim is the fastest one here. And definitely you can do this one. It's easy to farm. Just build a wall at the northern entrance. Go left. Deal with one base. Deal with the other. Rewards are yours. Really good, good rewards on this one. I can recommend Elheim. And then we got... Muspelheim. Muspelheim is not that difficult, but it's long again because the map is fully utilized and it's quite big. So yeah, Muspelheim I can recommend, but it's again gonna be long. And then we got Niflheim. I can recommend this one. This one is also pretty fast. It's not that bad, but I feel like they've been cases that this quest became long because all of a sudden the AI went crazy. I don't know why. It's just it's just think here yeah, that sometimes the AI just go crazy and it quests become much longer because of that. I don't know why. That can happen but it's like one in like I don't know like twenty games. One, 1 out of 20 is just crazy, still worth doing it. I think both of these I can recommend. Muspelheim is just long, Niflheim might become once in a while not nice to you. Okay, let's move on. So, Lodi. Okay, Lodi. This one is mainly for co-op players. But there are three quests you can play solo. Let's start with those. Dunum. I don't like this quest to be honest. I hate this quest. Again, it's one of those where you cannot train infantry for secondary objective. I just don't like this quest. And you cannot build walls either. So, oh god, I just hate this quest. Okay, I don't like this quest. 
if you like it, there are some nice rewards. I would suggest playing in Gop. Maybe if you know some trick how to beat it easily, then go ahead. I just don't recommend. Verona. Verona is pretty fast, actually. This is one of the faster quests you can find there. So yeah, if you're going for the chest, definitely worth doing. It can be somewhat nasty to you, though, so be careful there. If you can do it, yeah, go ahead. Vero Verona is fine, man. Verona also dies. This is one of the most difficult quests, one of the five stars. Uh, I would say if you, if you can do it in Coop, it can be fine. If you're doing this solo, well, it can be very difficult to beat this. So yeah, Coop, yes. Solo depends how good you are. Okay, now for the co-op only one, so Quickos. This is the fast one. I don't know how good this one is in co-op. I heard that it might be much more difficult than it looks. So I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. How often is this? Three days? Well, not bad rewards. I guess if you can do it, go ahead. Cremona, I remember this one. This is very easy quest. I even beat this solo, even in time. Oh boy, that was funny. Yeah, this is very easy quest. I could suggest this, but the rewards are just not that great, so I don't know. I guess you can do it, you can farm it if you're looking for something easy, but not worth farming in the long term. Nikaya, okay, this one I also did beat it, did beat it but. Yeah, rewards are still bad. I guess it's the same thing with Kamura. If you can do this, go ahead. But not worth in the long term. Agitna. Even though it's 4 star, I feel like it's one of the 5 star quests. Just because it's golf only, it might be it might be why it's 4, four star quest. Yeah, it might be one of the most difficult quests. If you can do it. I guess it's worth, it should be 30 minutes, right? I think the timer is 30 minutes. So if you can do it in 30 minutes, go ahead. Otherwise, yeah, don't even bother. It's a co-op only, okay, so you need a partner for this one. Okay, then we got Zambo. Zambo is gonna be a good one because there are, there's a lot of quests that I would say are easy to do. And also you get you get the torpedoes and elite ones here as well. Okay, touring in travel. No. Just don't do it. Oh boy. Even if you can beat it, don't do it. Do it just once for the global quest and be done with it. I don't think it's worth doing it at all. Oh boy, return the favor. Uh, this one can be somewhat annoying. I'm I feel like I tried it as Babylonians and it was just so easy because there were like no units at all. But you try it as Greeks and all of a sudden there's an army at you coming from the left like all the time. And I'm like, what is going on here? I think it's an easy quest, but it might be annoying at times. So I'm gonna say if you can do it, go ahead. It's not that bad, but it can be annoying at some points, yeah. Totally Turanian. It's a fast quest. It's something like the Village of Size. If you can do it, go ahead. There, there are some nice rewards. Less treasure camps, but I think it's much easier than Size right now. So yes, I can recommend this. It might be hard to get used to the timer though, but I think you can do it. So Totally Turanian, yes. Just as it. It's a fast quest. I don't, I don't want to recommend this because it's so annoying to deal with this one. Oh boy, if, if you mess up, if, if you're not sending those resources over time to the green AI, it can end up dead even after you've sent all those resources. That happened to me once. So yeah, you want to send those all the time, but you also need resources to build up your own army so you can defend yourself. It's just really an quest. So not really. 
Brothers Keeper. If you know how to do it, you can watch my video. Because that, that just that just shows how easy it can be to deal with this quest. Yeah, so if you can do this quest, I can recommend this one. This one is not that bad if you get used to it. Join forces. This is probably the, one of the easiest quests. I would say it might be even number one easiest quest. Because it, again, it's spearman only. It's just the enemy attacks early, soon or so. That might be why it's like second easiest, but it's definitely one of the easiest quest. Again, you can just do it with spearman. You can go with something heavier that does not get countered by Asabaras or Calafrax. Very easy quest, I can recommend this one, no problem. Resistance in system, really easy quest. Again, it's not that difficult. I can recommend this one, time challenge depends. I never had a problem with that one, it shouldn't be that hard. But if you're having a hard time with it, yeah, it's just, you just need practice, okay? And then yeah, the attacks might be somewhat annoying once they start coming, but you can handle those, they are not that bad. So yeah, that's the ball. Okay, so we got all the ball. Let's go to Rakotis then. And uh, yeah, Rakotis. After the changes that's been done by adding the champion mode and such. Yeah, some elite elephants guarding the room. So Village of Science, I can recommend if you can do it. Otherwise, yeah, it might be just... If you can do the time challenge, I wouldn't even bother with it. Lower Isle, in my opinion, is somewhat nicer than Size. So, I would recommend Lower Nile over Size. I think it's definitely nicer. It might be harder because you need to defend against the enemy. I think you can do it. It's not that bad. You can just build up walls if you need to. Memphis is spearman only, so if you have good spear or good equipment on your spearman, it should be fine. Just remember there are elephants, and that can hurt you. So make sure you have enough spearman, and if you need to get some cavalry armor, and yeah, there's a good spear in Crete that you can definitely grab that one. Dashu, if you can do it in time, I think it's pretty worth. I personally prefer more Giza. Giza is really easy, really fast quest. But if you can manage Dashu, Dash Dashu can be even more worth. But I am definitely gonna go on Giza. If you can manage Dashu, go ahead. It's also good. If you can't, that's fine. You can you get Giza. Fire Voices, if you like water battles, it's a really good quest. Go ahead, do this one. It can be nice, but it might take a few tries before before you get used to the time challenge. Eevees, Eevees again, it's similar to Felix Returns. You can do it, but it might take a while to do it before you get used to it. So, no, but if you're looking for some challenge, go ahead. And what are the kings? I think you cannot do this solo really fast. It's just longer quest no matter what. But if you do it with co partner, it can be done I think in less than 40 minutes. If you're fast enough, obviously. Other than that, I wouldn't recommend this for farming. So yeah, co op yes. Solo no. Okay, let's also, I need to mention that also the champion modes here in Rakotis and Zabol. So, yeah, if you wanna just play some of these quests and you don't have the gear, you can just go play the champion mode, which is using a little bit different tech tree. And this one has been recently added. If you click on this button, it will open a link in your browser where you will find the champion mode tech tree and you can just check your safe tech tree for the champion mode there it's it's different than the normal tech tree 
But yeah, if you don't have gear, that's fine. Let's go play champion mode. Your gear is just for vanity. That's pretty much it. And again, it's in Rakotis and in Zabol. Okay, now what do I move? We've been here. Let's go to Tarzos, yes. Tarzos. Well, there is one quest some people just might not like. But let's start with Holy Man. This quest, if you can do it, totally worth farming. There's a lot of chests. It. It's something similar to Tigris. Just a lot of secondary objectives. So if you can handle this one, easy chest rewards. Remember to build a wall on the water crossing, okay? So the red one does not attack you from the bottom. And uh, yeah, be fast because once the orange starts coming, oh boy, it can hurt. And remember that my there is a hippican wave coming from the bottom corner on your side. So yeah, make sure you have a lot of spearmen for those. Uh, yeah, close this. Oh, Bell of Timber. I wouldn't really recommend this for farming. Not really. <laughs> I just don't think it's worth farming, it's like, it's not the worst quest, but I don't really like it that much. I wouldn't recommend it, no. And Battle of Hope is, I'm gonna say, if you're one of those, it's like complaining about this quest, yeah, you don't have to. But if you're like me, you can do this quest in 30 minutes, and it's not bad rewards. Like, look at the amount of chests you get. That's good. And also, and five points coins really worth doing it. So yeah, if you're like me, you can do it fast. Go ahead. 30, 35 minutes if you can do. I think it's worth. If you're slower, you just need practice. You just need to practice. Okay, that's Tarzos. Let's move on to Rome. And this one, I'm just gonna say, I don't recommend doing the Rome solo at least because the legendary quests here are just on another level of difficulty you see two star it might be three star rather you see three star it's like four star if you see four star it's four star <laughs> but yeah it's definitely on another level so crucium i would say co-op yes maybe I mean, if you're playing this in gold, then like your right side should be safe, or your left side. So, yeah, you just focus on the one side. Shouldn't be that hard, and it offers really nice rewards. So, gold, yes. Solo, no. Sea of holes. This quest is not that bad. If you get used to it, and yeah, learn how to defend against the merchant transports then it's a fine quest it's a fine quest just not that many rewards might be a little bit longer i think this one is fine but i wouldn't say worth that much for farming get back is really annoying if you ask me and i also heard if you reach the golden age that they might start spawning onagers and palintons i think you don't really one of each golden age. That's what I've heard. I haven't seen it for myself. When I say it's worth farming, I mean rewards are nice, but no, it's I feel like it's too annoying to deal with. Then we got Fabi, your rich man. I'm telling you, last time I played this, it just made me angry. I don't want to do this ever again. So no. I don't recommend this quest. Corp, yes. Solo, never. Come together is nice. Come together is nice. You can do this one, but I'm gonna recommend it again in Corp. I feel like I always, whenever I try it, it's just a long quest which feels unnecessary. So I'm gonna say Corp, yes, so you can at least play it and cut the time a little bit, but solo, it might take a while. But yeah, come together is probably the one I can recommend. Don't let me down. Oh boy. Time challenge is really annoying here. 
so again gulp so you make it so you you actually get the time challenge done solo it can be very annoying Again, gulp yes solo no northern town it's a long quest the map is huge it just takes a while I can recommend it even for solo but it's just longer quest in my opinion so yeah go up so you can get it done faster Alia I'll be honest I haven't done the goddamn time challenge so I don't know if I should recommend it or not I'm not gonna recommend it at all I'm not really sure Invasion of Rome Invasion of Rome if you can do this one then you have quite rewarding quests to farm on because this quest just gives a lot of chests a lot of coins and empire points and you can do it in like 30 minutes if you're fast enough obviously <laughs> if you can do this in 30 minutes totally worth with the time challenge obviously but otherwise again I would say go partner required Okay, this might look like we're done, but there's a few things. First, we need to go to Thief. Because there's one quest that needs to be mentioned, and that's the Elite Meter Increase. And this one is not a legendary quest, okay? Remember that. But it's a quest that can be very difficult, especially after changing the timers and like when the next wave comes it just became so much annoying it could be close to legendary difficulty and oh yeah so what's worth mentioning here the rewards are really huge quest takes i think about 40 minutes it should be about 40 minutes if you clear the waves it's somewhat less than 40 minutes so yeah a lot of chests you can get here but what's really needed needed to say is this is the only way for you to get the Minotaur well you can play a regular one but you have better chances here you get I believe there's 12 chests in total if you pick the from choose one section so yeah pick this one bam you get 12 chests a lot of points coins and also creed points which you can use to get another large chest so yeah 13 chests for this one if you can do this solo good for you I would suggest doing this in co-op rather yeah play this in co-op it's gonna be much easier on you and uh, yeah you can definitely get the minota only here so that's worth mentioning and now we're gonna move on to the last part and that's the archive buildings so let's start with the summer one and remember if you haven't played event quest or you did and didn't get the archives well better, better look forward to the next event I can make it happen. let's start with the summer one so of these two general setter it's the mice I don't recommend this one I just feel like it's too much work for too little reward Good empire points, good coins, sure, but not that many chests, not really worth it might be. Layer of the Kokraki, this one is worth, this is really fast quest, less than 25 minutes can be done. And yeah, empire points, coins, but so many secondary objectives, so many chests, oh boy, really fast quest. You definitely want to find this one, I highly recommend it. If you don't have it, well, tough luck for you. Halloween event. I don't, I don't have one of those yet. So, Dead of the Night. I can recommend this one. 30 minutes, you can be done sooner than you just wait. Great rewards, in my opinion. Totally worth farming. Uh, Fry Club, which I'm missing here. That one is fast, or can be done fast, but I hate it because it's so annoying like it's constant waves of units it's just so annoying I hate that so 
I don't recommend it, and I don't really get it why it's one star, to be honest. Your final Horn. This one is nice quest. It's not that hard, so you can definitely do this one. There's not many secondary objectives, that's worth mentioning. However, just find rewards. Yeah, I can recommend this one, but it's not the best one. Bring out your dead. This one might be a little bit annoying, but if you can handle it, it's probably the most rewarding quest you can find. So many secondary objectives, 14,000 coins in total, so many M5 points. Is it worth doing? Definitely. Can you do it? That's up to you. I can definitely recommend it, but only if you can handle it. Preferably in court. And only the good die young. It's similar to the Dead of the Night rewards. Would I recommend this one? Never. 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 Even though it can be done fast, never. I just hate this quest. Too many ranged units. Too many too many units coming from the central place. At like 7 minutes. It's just too much. Okay. It's just too much. I'm gonna say hey, no. But if you're playing this in co-op, it should be fine. Okay, last there one. The winter end. Oh boy. Okay, Ice King Mountain high enough. I kinda hate this one because and no infantry. And I just love infantry, okay? And I feel like I cannot defend with anything else if I don't have the infantry. It just feels bad to me. Maybe some sips are fine, but I just feel like if I'm infantry, it's bad. Good rewards. I don't really recommend this one because of the no infantry, but if you are fine for the infantry, go ahead, it's, it's a good quest. Wait, the one I, I find this one really easy, and a lot of secondary objectives, a lot of chests, definitely worth farming in my opinion. Close the buff force, it's like buff force, it just feels easier and with better rewards. Is it worth doing? Well, since I recommended buff force, I can totally recommend this one. Totally worth doing. Run Rudolf run. This one is very long, in my opinion. If you're playing this in co op, should be fine. If you're playing this solo, well, it's a long and long quest. Too long, in my opinion. Is it worth doing? Sure. But you don't want to spend too much time on this, so play this one in co op. Mary Mary Marion. It's just Marion. It's just less coins. Otherwise, it's about the same rewards. I would just say go do normal Marion and don't do this one. It's also annoying because you really need to build up walls here. Then you also need to kill the Ice King. Oh boy! I would say it's more annoying Marion. Can you do it? I think you should be fine. It's just less coins. Can the King Korean? Totally worth doing. It's this one is, in my opinion, the easiest legendary quest you can find in the game. And so many rewards for this one. It feels like a crime farming on this one, but it's so worth. If you have this one available to you, go farm it. It's so many rewards. It's so worth. Questing on a snowy evening. I can totally recommend this one. This one is not that difficult, can be done in like 30 minutes. So many good rewards. Totally worth doing. And that's the last legendary quest. I hope I didn't miss anything. Hopefully I mentioned everything. Tell me what you think about this. These recommended quests, these recommendations. Like I hope I believe that's the best way to play to farm in this game like the best quest I told you my opinion about legendary ones tell me what do you think is there someone that I'm maybe like overrating or underrating just tell me in the comments and remember to like this share this and remember to subscribe to the channel please help me grow
And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.